Nearly everything in my house has come from a thrift store, and I found one more thing that I'm going to buy and make over for my she shed. <laughs> this is sponsored by Savers. They gave me a task of going to their thrift store to find something useful that I can make over that wouldn't be too expensive, it wouldn't be too difficult, so I found something. So I went on National Thrift Shop Day and I found this amazing but ugly file cabinet. I mean, it was perfect. It was like under $6 and I thought this thing could be beautiful. It had some rust and things like that, but guess what? We're gonna make it look beautiful and that's what we're gonna do in today's video. Be sure to stick around because at the end of the video, I will tell you how you can win $500. Just imagine how much you can buy for $500 at Savers, like hello. All right guys, let's jump into this video right now. For this project, I used Simple Green with gloves to clean the file cabinet. I also needed rust remover, microfiber towels. I did use furniture paint, or you can use spray paint, a paintbrush, and a razor scraper. I also needed some metal primer and cardboard, or you can use drop cloths, but you'll also need some painter's tape. Now, the most important step before you get started is to clean it properly. Definitely clean it because the paint is only gonna adhere to a clean surface. Now I'll tell you, if you're working with metal, be sure to wear some thicker gloves. When I was cleaning the bottom of this, I did slice my finger. That was not good. So be sure if you're working with metal, use some gloves that have a little bit of protection. After cleaning off the furniture with the Simple Green, make sure that you give it a good wash with just clean water and remove any surface imperfections. This is where I love using the scraper because any tags, any gummy spots, those can easily come off with a scraper or use something like Goo Gone. All right, the next step was to remove the rust. You see here that it's got not a lot of rust, but enough to where I just wanted to coat it get it nice and clean, and then be able to prepare the surface for paint. This is a rust remover that you can just spray on. You use a brush, completely coat it. You don't wanna leave it on for more than five, 10 minutes, maybe not even that long, depending on how much rust you have. Now the instructions on the back said, do not let this dry. So you wanna keep working it into the surface, reapplying it, and once it's had about five or 10 minutes to work, then you can remove it with fresh, clean water. Here's the reason why you should not let it dry if you're putting this rust remover on metal, because it will remove the finish. And this is what happened when I started removing some of this rust remover that did dry a little bit, the finish started coming off and I was worried that this would create a bumpy surface. So in order to try to minimize some of the quote unquote damage that I had done, I used the scraper just to remove any loose bits of finish. And then I just continued on with the project. And I'll admit, I love to finish the bottoms of pieces of furniture because if for some reason somebody turns this over or you decide to sell it and they're loading it into the back of their car, you don't want them to see the ugly bottom that you didn't finish. This had a lot of rust and the rust remover, you see it's doing its job. It's literally disappearing in front of my eyes. And the same thing happened on the bottom of the file cabinet. All of the existing finish came off. So I will tell you, if you're using rust remover, do an area that you can just test to see what it's gonna do to your finish on your project. I taped off the feet so I could try to minimize getting any spray paint on those. And then I took it outside to do some spray paint for a primer. Now people will ask me, do you have to prime furniture before you paint it? And that's such a loaded question. I would say that if you're working with metal, then I would definitely use a clean metal primer. This is a primer that you would use on metal that doesn't have a lot of rust or you've removed the rust and you're able to just move on to the next step, which is painting it. If you have a lot of rust that you can't remove, then you would wanna use a rusty primer. And here's a really good tip to get good results when you're using spray paint, whether it's a primer or it's the final finish on your project. When I was actually spraying this and it's upright in this position, vertical, you tend to get runs all the time, no matter how many inches away you are, even if you're the recommended eight to 10 inches away, it tends to run. So here's a little tip, turn the furniture flat so that whatever surface you're spraying is flat and give it time to dry, maybe 15, 20 minutes. It's gonna take a little bit longer because you're gonna let this dry before you move on to the next surface, but this is gonna give you the best results when you're spray painting, whether it's primer or again, it's your final finish. 
And remember the side that had a lot of the finish come off? Surprisingly, it didn't look bumpy when I did a coat of primer. So I did one coat and I figured the final finish would look pretty good. I wasn't worried about how it would turn out. I did the top, I sprayed the rest as quickly as I could before losing daylight and left it for the next day to completely dry so that I could get back into my shed, my she shed, and put on these beautiful furniture paint colors. I love this color. I will leave links down below in the blog post so you can see all the materials that I used, but this was the gorgeous color that I wanted to use. And I love this color. It's a blue gray. And remember how disgusting that bottom looked? Look how beautiful that looks. It is fresh, it's primed, it is ready for paint. And let's talk about what I actually used to paint this. Now you can use a synthetic paintbrush like I did. This particular brand of paint, which I will leave down in the link for the blog post, actually recommends putting it on with a brush and then using a sponge or a roller to go over it just to get rid of the brush strokes. I didn't really care too much about the brush strokes, but if you are someone who is concerned about brush strokes, you can roll it on or you can use a sponge and that'll give it a nice even coat without seeing any of the brush strokes. So let's talk about how many coats of paint did I use? I actually did two coats. And then the, of course the primer would be the third coat. So with three coats, I felt that this was really even and looked great. Now, if you're not using any primer, you might have to use more than two coats. It really just depends on what you're painting. If it's dark, if it's light, if it's something that is gonna show through, it really just depends. But you're gonna wanna put as many coats as needed so that you get a finish that looks really, really good and you can't see the material underneath. Now, originally I planned to paint the top the same color as the body, but once I got started with this project, I thought, wow, the white looks really good with this color. So I decided to leave it white. And that's what I like about DIY projects. You can change it in the middle. So here I'm using a product called Surface Prep. And what it does is it cleans, it degreases. It's very similar to TSP, but this is something that new that I ordered. You generally don't have to do this step with this product. However, you could have just used the simple green and then primed the interior, but I wanted to try something a little different. <laughs> anyway, once you apply it, you use a scouring pad, you rough up the surface, and this is supposed to help the paint adhere. So again, me just trying new products, and I think this is what's great about DIY, is that you can try new things and see what you like compared to doing one thing versus the other. But here you can see that the interior is scuffed up, it's deglossed, and we're ready for paint. Now, even though this was deglossed, it was ready for paint, it was going to adhere, I felt that I still needed to do multiple coats in order to get a really good coverage. Here, I just had one coat, and that's typically going to look pretty yucky. So don't worry, first coat is usually the ugly coat. <laughs> the second coat is where the magic happens and you'll start seeing more coverage. But I do think that after two coats, I still needed one more coat. So I did apply another coat and I put it on with the paintbrush and then used the roller to kind of smooth it out just to see how that worked. And it worked pretty well for the wheels. Yeah, I did get some paint on those, so I cleaned those up. But let's have a look at what it looked like before. This thing was just passed over by so many people, but it was sitting there waiting for me for under $6 and it's perfect for my she shed. Look how pretty this thing is. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love how it turned out. I don't have any flooring yet here in my she shed, but with all of these little projects coming together, it's making me get excited about the possibilities of how this could be office space plus workspace. And I had made these little boxes some time ago and I figured these were perfect to hang up with magnets. So if you've got a file cabinet, add some magnets and use that for extra storage. Now I will have to take the lamp off. I can put my files in there, which are so colorful. And I did find a key. It did not have a key, but I ordered one online and it works. Okay, a big thanks to Savers for sponsoring this project. Here's how you can win $500. Go to Instagram, go to Savers 
underscore thrift, follow them, and then post a video or a photo of something that you love that's thrifted and tell us why you love thrifting. Why is it important to you? Be sure to use the hashtag thrifty nominee 2022 for a chance to win. You got to get that submission in by August 31st. All right, guys, I will see you next project.